Now the tug has given up. He's not waiting for the bridge anymore. He is heading out. I guess we're gonna bug out of here too and head for the anchorage. There is no other way to get out of here other than turning back the way we came, right? And you know, no, no, this is it. This is it. I this mean, is it. otherwise it's like motoring for days. <laughs> so we can do everything we've done. Wow. But uh, no, it's a keep going. Everything um, depends everything on this bridge. On getting through here. So he said they're on demand until... Well, until 6.30 in the morning when they close for rush hour. From the anchorage two miles away, we couldn't get here by 6.30 because it'd still be pitch black out. We wouldn't be able to see. Bridge 7 will be open. Wow. Oh, it's opening up. It's opening up. We just about we gave up. Oh it's opening God. up. We're just about to head back. That we really want. Bridge. This is a northbound sale. Will you be opening up uh, as well? That's permanent, sir. We're going to open because of the long delays uh, we had because of the breakdown. Um, is there some other tug over there waiting to come through? I yes. can't see from my vantage point. Uh, <laughs> Going to Norfolk. We've been waiting here for like four and a half hours. I believe that that rich gods are angry gods, and they need sacrifices. Like the tug guy had to leave, and then the bridge god was like, "Okay, let's open now." So that was two horns. He'll be passing us with his port sign. And now the Gilmerton Bridge is raising up. Say again. Yes, sir. How much clearance? We are at 56 feet vertical. What did he say? Uh, he was asking how much vertical clearance we need because they can open up to any uh, any level. They're going to open it up to 75 for us. <laughs> Sailing vessel Paragon. Paragon, thank you. Is he is he now open? Is that 75 feet? You think? Well, like yes. Can I go through? Yeah, you get the green line. Go ahead. Which uh, direction will you be passing this after we uh, go on these bridge? Roger. Go on well, I said which direction. Keep the smoking. Yep. Yep. Roger that. Roger, Captain. Will do. Thank you. Paragon out. <laughs> Woohoo! Keep her smoking. Yeah! Bridge number one, bridge number two. Thank you very much, guys. You rock. Yeah! <laughs> Somehow, I'm looking around. I don't think I'm going to have any problems with depth <laughs> around here. <laughs> Frickin' enormous. Sweet. bit bigger than uh, yeah. <laughs> sailcraft. Imagine the work you could have done to Paragon here. You know? Oh my so. god. <laughs> <laughs> that boat's hailing port is Istanbul. The Minanor. Here. I think the life raft uh, like jettison yeah. on the stern is pretty wild. Wouldn't that be crazy just to launch in that thing and just the impact that you hit the water from that high up. I know. I am following you, my friend. See if my little engine can keep up with you. Well, that's good, man. That would have been hard to turn around and uh, and not know what what would be in store for us the next day. When it's gonna open up. Yeah. But it'd suck if I have to if I had to 
bring you all the way back to Oregon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My big vacation. We, uh, we went up the ICW to the bridge and then turned back. <laughs> on the head of those cargo ships. Yeah. What is that bulb? Is that uh, like sonar or something? That's, I don't know. Or is it just allow it to transit the water better? I think, I think it's an aerodynamic thing. Yeah. It's just bulb design. Uh, but I, I don't, I really don't. Know. Some, of, some of the larger vessels is even more pronounced. Yeah. You know, I've always wondered. Shared together, <laughs> you know, the bonding at that Glimmerton Bridge, man. <laughs> so he'll be on our port side. Two whistles. Nice. Nice guy. Does that mean we get to use our little horn? Beep, beep. <laughs> we could. I just don't know if it'll be genuine, you know. Wow. <laughs> okay, so we just went under the Norfolk Southern Railroad Lift Bridge. That was bridge number five, I'm guessing. Then we have the Jordan Highway Lift Bridge. And that's uh, that up there, I guess. Yep. And then we have the NNP Beltline Railroad Lift Bridge. And that's it. And we should be cruising in. I remember. I think I was at like about where the Potomac River, you know, meets uh, the Chesapeake Bay, and I was coming down there. And all of a sudden, those tankers, they come on you. This one guy's coming off the channel, like into the channel. Yeah. And he's like, hey, you know, which way are you headed? I'm like, whichever way you're not. <laughs> and, uh, he's, like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to make it a starboard turn. I'm like, I'm going to port then. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, and it's just sailing next to those things. Just uh, kind of awe-inspiring. Goodbye, Albert Pike. So what does blue flashing lights mean uh, on the water there, Jay? Uh, it means Coast Guard or, or some form of, uh, of Marine Police. My experience so far with the Marine Police has not been that pleasant. <laughs> My experience with Coast Guard actually has not been bad at all. Um, I've been boarded a few times for a safety inspection. But I'd rather not go through that, that whole routine today. They're doing work on number 57 there on our hull. Yeah. Looks like something you don't need to know about. That's a destroyer and it's painted gray and then the, the whole structure is designed to not show up on radar. And that's why these things are shaped in these funky fashions. Unlike us, you know, you put things up to be seen on radar. They are playing a different game. I love the glow here at night. It just has a, Norfolk has a saffron glow. Starboard? It's a small one. Small aircraft. The large one is usually the first dock there. The 
really looking forward to getting the hook down. Yep, Anchorage Port will follow this breakwater directly past the shell sign. Okay. <laughs> it's so strange to see no boats anchored there. Usually there's, you know... Usually it's full of boats. Oh yeah, usually there's, you know, at least 20 boats out there. Let's just try right in front of there. Okay. But I, I wouldn't go too far in that region there. Okay. <laughs> so just kind of pull it right up in here. Awesome. And uh, we'll just keep a close eye on the deck. Yep. You want me to be a dedicated depth watcher? Yes. Yeah. I'm not super confident on this ground or this area, so... But you've anchored here before? Yes, I have, yeah. And there were lots of boats here before? Yeah. Where's the dinghy dock? It's uh, in that marina. So where, where, so we row we right in, in, right in there, yeah. Right in down there. So the thing is, wherever I drop it, we're going to swing all around that area. So I really should like yeah. motor around that area and just scope it out. I'm going to go to where I think would be a nice place to drop it and then go much further in to see if it run ground. So we're at 10.5 here. I'm happy with the distance in between here and the marina. 7.8, 7.5, 7.4. Getting shower very fast. So, okay, we're about this far in. It looks like we're at low tide here. Great. Uh, because the, the I can see the growth on the dock, the, the water is much lower. So, that's more than a, enough room to swing. We'll just keep going until we get to one. And then turn around. <laughs> Dangerous man. <laughs> We don't run aground until it reads zero. I calibrated it so that we don't run aground until it says zero. And it says three fourths of what fine. Wait, hey, Mo, not only did he calibrate it, he's tested it. <laughs> see, if, see if we have enough room to swing down there, and uh, then I'll just go back to where we were before and drop it, knowing that we have the room to swing around. This is great! Two six, two seven, yeah. I'm gonna go right there. I'm just gonna go over there and drop it right now. What do you say? Right here? I, I'd like it right here. Right here. And... under the keel the way I have it calibrated. Our draft is six, so we're in 10 feet of water. So one to five scope is 50 feet. We put out 25. We need the stern to move out so that the anchor can dig in. We might have to wait a while for it to happen. The boat's swinging around. Turn, we'll end up right here. I love this windlass. It does a really good job of, of raising the chain and the anchor. If there's a lot of pressure on it, it's, it can't really deal with that, but I just motor towards wherever the anchor is and that slacks the chain and then I run up here and press the button and that, that brings it in and it has no problem bringing in chain when it's not under tension. And so you just got a new anchor, right? You just got a rock Yeah, I got a rock yeah, nub, 75 about that. pound rock nub. So far, I'm really pleased with it. I had a 60 pound CQR okay. before the rock nub, and if it was dug in in one direction and then the wind just did a 180 and the boat came around and then the chain just pulled it like that, then it would pop out. Um, 
the real problem was that it would it would not reset if the boat was under underway. You know, it wasn't going to grab again. Wouldn't it wouldn't dig back in. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the the Rachna, it seems that uh, the Rachna will always dig in wherever it is. Hi, how are you? There they are. Okay, so that right there, that's uh, 25, 25 feet, and that's 50 feet. So uh, five to one scope on a rock and a 75 pound anchor. So what you're saying is you're gonna sleep well tonight? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Think so. Next we'll do the engine test, you know, in reverse, throttling it up and making sure the anchor's dug in. Okay. So. First, I center the wheel, lock it in the center position, and then low throttle, I put it in reverse, and I just leave it like that for a little while. And I watch to see if the boat is actually moving. In the anchor grab, the, the chain is now taut. We're straightening out. And I'm looking at anything on the boat and taking a bearing on something on land. Like I'm looking at that winch and I'm noticing that it's right in front of that building. Now I'm gonna increase the throttle in reverse. And we move back a little bit more. The chain's being pulled a little bit more. It's in front of like that light right there. And now I will increase the throttle some more. The winch is still right in front of that light. We're not moving. I can tell by looking at that bearing. Now I'm going to really increase the engine RPMs. 85 horsepower engine in reverse and practically full throttle. And we are not going anywhere. We're not moving at all. So now we're set. Turn off the engine. We're home. Well, I'll put the snubber on the chain and we'll get the dinghy in the water and row ashore. Yep. Go for it. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Awesome. We're delirious right now. Yeah. Deliriously <laughs> happy. Man, we're almost going back to hole in the wall, hole in the rock, oh, hole so in my fun. head. <laughs> Mo, could you uh, unlock the uh, drum on the windlass so the chain goes out? Right. And you can lock it now. Lock. Thank you. <laughs> it was a good shakedown. Yeah. It was, great uh, it was yeah, you had a little bit of everything. So, wow. Yeah, it was a cool, cool adventure so far. Wow. The view looks a little different from Oriental outside. Eh? Oh, yeah. Bright <laughs> <laughs> lights, yeah. huge ships, big city. <laughs> we can row to an aircraft carrier right wow. now. <laughs> we might get shot, but you know. Yeah. We're not an Oriental anymore. So, cheers. Just Thank cheers. you so much to the cruising cheers life. to the cruising life. <laughs> hey! Oh, that's good. A little bit. Every time I add something new, I add a little bit more curry. Curried eggs. Fresh chili based. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're anchored right off of this marina. The paddle wheel ferry. The next one will be in half an hour. <laughs> Is Military Highway Station. It's like you're a kid in a toy store. That is pretty tippy proof, huh? Three days we'll be in New York City. I was running, rowing us home. What would you do, Kevin? <laughs> We're looking at a northerly winds, 20 to 25. 